Welcome back to my kitchen, Gigi's Kitchen, where you get to learn all kinds of things about cooking. Cooking tips, prepping, cooking, dining, all kinds of new recipes. And so over the next few weeks, we're moving into some holidays. We're getting ready for a few things, but I'm going to make up some new recipes here over the next couple of weeks. I get lots of requests. Right now I have requests for soups and some holiday sides and things like that. So we're going to move on into that. But today I wanted to talk about a basic ingredient that we use in everything and that is stock. And the next couple of recipes, I'm going to need a lot of stock. We're going to do some risotto, which will take four to six cups of stock. We're going to do some chicken uh, Provencal rustic soup, and that's going to take a lot of stock. And then we've got cornbread dressing coming up, and that's going to take stock. We can always buy it in the box, buy a big box of it, or we can make it up, freeze it, and have it ready to go. We're going to review all these options for you today and talk a little bit about stock. One of the things that I really want to say is that it's pretty easy to make. I have two methods of cooking stock. I have a quick recipe and then I have a long drawn out recipe. And we're going to talk a little bit about both of those. But before we go much further, I want to kind of review our boxes. You get these in the counter and stock can be anything. It can be fish, it can be beef, it can be chicken, vegetable, a combination of the two. A lot of times I want a really rich stock. I might mix a beef stock with a chicken stock. So it's all in what your dish you're preparing, how you want the taste, because it can be the basis for you. It can be a thick stock. It can be um, a thin, brothy stock. So we need to kind of look at our ingredients, see what we're working with. Now I have to say, that I am not endorsed by any of these products here. I just went to my cabinet and pulled out what I had so I could show you. The most important thing about stock is reading your ingredients in the box that you're buying so you know if it's going to be a good match for your recipe you're preparing. So I would say that for my cornbread dressing we're gonna make here in a couple weeks, I would just want a light brothy stock. I don't need anything real dense and heavy. I just want the chicken stock to, to flavor my cornbread. But then if I'm making a gravy or a sauce, I might want something a little richer. So it's up to you. A couple of days ago, I was coming to the grocery store and I saw this one and it was on sale. And I was like, oh, look, there's some chicken stock. Let me see what it is. And it says organic, free range, chicken, bone, raw, fat free, um, low cholesterol, blah, 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 all that stuff. No MSG, which I am so not an MSG person. Um, don't use it in anything. And I want to keep my sodium level in my dishes low. So you always see that. So that I can salt it to what I think the salt flavoring should be. And sometimes our stocks can be really high in sodium and it can the salt from the stock can then overpower the dish. So we need to be real careful. So I always tell you to make sure you read your ingredients on the side, look at your sodium content. This one only had 95 in it, which I thought was really good. Now, because it is bone broth, it's going to be a creamier, thicker broth than just a regular standard chicken broth. And basically all it has in it is chicken um, juice and it's been cooked down and the bones have been cooked down and it's all good and juicy. And so if you read the ingredients, there's hardly anything in it, just chicken. And that's what you want. You want to make sure it's not got overwhelmingly 10 million things in it. This is another one I buy pretty regularly. <clears throat> and the reason that I buy this one is because it's very similar to my homemade stock. When I go to make stock, which we're gonna make some in a minute, 
It has almost the same ingredients as what I would put in my stock at home. So then my dishes that I recreate on a regular basis will always kind of be the same. Of course, they're never always exactly the same like they are at the restaurant because we're a home cook and there's a lot of variables in there. But this keeps me close and it's a good a good price. It's not too expensive. Kitchen Basics. I think McCormick puts this one out. And the sodium content on this was 120. So it's not bad sodium either. That way that gives me room to bring my salt up or not if I want to. And so I use this one. Now you can see this is my beef broth. This is a Swanson brand. I use it a lot. It's unsalted. So if I go over here and look at my salt content, it says 75. It is very low. So that's really nice. I don't have to worry about over, you know, over salting anything on that. And it is, it is a light broth, as well as this one is a light broth. It's not real dark and rich as the bone broth, but it works well. And sometimes I do half and half, depending on what I want in my flavoring. So on this one, it's pretty good. The prices are usually good. You can get it just about anywhere. And I usually keep a box of the beef and the chicken in the cabinet. Now the other one I do use all the time, I use on a regular basis, is the Better Than Bouillon Organic Roasted Chicken Base. And it's a really thick paste. And I usually take like a teaspoon of this paste to a cup of hot water and then I want to flavor my, whatever it is I'm flavoring. I will say that this is very, very high in sodium. So whereas these were like around 100 milligrams of sodium, this one has 700 milligrams of sodium. And so per serving, so whatever that is to equal out of, but I know I put this in and it is going to salt up whatever it is I need. So you have to be really careful. If the flavor is good, it's very intense, and yet it is very salty. So I may do my low sodium and then come back and richen it up with this. There's all kinds of options. I use this in ramen a lot when I'm making some ramen noodles. I'll use this because it has high sodium, but then I have to be really careful with my soy sauce. So it's a balancing act all the time because of the high sodium in this one. So there's two other types of stock I use all the time. One is my, well, they're both what I make at home. One is a quick stock and the other one is a long simmering stock. So this quick stock is this. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're just gonna throw this together. So I have it to move on to the risotto recipes that are coming up next week and then this, you know, chicken soup and the cornbread dressing and so forth. So I always seem to be having a deli chicken in my refrigerator, rotisserie chicken you get from the deli. I utilize that all the time. So one of the things that I like to do is we use that whole chicken. We do. Um, we will get the chicken and I cut it up and we make salads out of it. I put it into soup and stew. I may cut it up and just make chicken salad out of it. So we use this. And once I'm done with that chicken, I make stock out of it. So since the chicken is already cooked, it's already seasoned, usually pretty highly seasoned, you don't have to do a whole lot to it. You just put it in the pan. But one of the things that I always do is I make sure I have a nice big pan, big stock pot, like so. And then I take my chicken and I debone it. So I take all the chicken meat off of it. Now this is the chicken meat I will be putting in my chicken soup that I will be making coming up. So I will put this in the refrigerator and keep it there covered and sealed until I'm ready to make my soup out of it. But this is the remnants of it. And so basically it's one chicken breast, a thigh, and a wing. And that's a lot of meat. And then I'll be adding some other drumsticks to it as well. So I have picked off all the meat off the bone. Now the leftover bits and pieces is all of what is left here. I have the skin, I have all the bones, I have bits and pieces of meat, and every bit of this goes in the pot. It's already cooked. 
It's already seasoned, so it's not going to have to simmer for hours and hours and hours. And you can, you can let it go until it reduces down really well and becomes, you know, more intense. But if I'm going to make a soup out of it that night or a rice dish, this goes pretty fast. So I'm going to put in, i got three carrots here, and I'm going to break them in half and throw them in there. I've got a bunch of peppercorns here. They're going in. And my celery goes in. i got three stalks of celery. So this is about a half a chicken and three stalks of celery, three carrots, blah, blah, blah. There we go. That goes in some leftover part there. I've got half an onion. And it's just a little half onion I had in the refrigerator I took out. I've got some bay leaves. Two dried bay leaves. Three garlics going in. Now you can see I will cover this with water, hot water, and then it will go onto the stove. It will come to a roaring boil, and then I will turn it down to a simmer and let it go. And I might use it this evening when I'm, whatever it is I'm cooking, because it's already seasoned. Once the carrots are tender and the celery is tender, I may even take those out and cut them and put them in the dish that I'm making. So they, it goes a long way. We use every bit of this. Then once I get my carrots and celery out that I want to keep, I strain it and then I let it cool. Then I will put it in a Ziploc bag and stick it in the freezer till I'm ready for it. So I will remember. But we're going to use this pretty quickly. I think like tomorrow I'm going to cook the soup. So here we go. Here's our stock ready to go. So this is one of the things that I think it's really important to be able to, to, to master. And it's very easy. The same, if you're doing um, beef, you can just put the beef in there and let it simmer. With beef, if I have bones in there, I will brown the bones really good in the bottom, make some fawn, then still I add the same thing, the maripot, which is the carrot, celery, onion, my bay leaf, some peppercorns, and then you can add a little salt to it if you want, your hot water, put it on the stove and let it simmer down. If you're making fish stock, which we do because we do eat fish stew and other dishes that you might want a little bit of fish stock to enhance your flavoring of your dish, we will take our fish bones, fish heads, fish bones, fish skin, all of it goes in the pot with the maripot, the same process, simmer it down and strain it and you have really nice uh, fish stock, shrimp stock. You put all the shells in there and then you cook that down. You can put the shrimp shells in with your fish if you want even and combine it together so you will have that. So there's a lot of ways to do this. After Thanksgiving's over, take the turkey, we cook it down, and then we put the turkey stock in the freezer. And turkey stock is really good. It's so dark and rich. And so we utilize that for all kinds of dishes. I think Learning how to make stock and getting your favorite method down is very easy. Now, if you're doing the long simmering one, which is fine, it takes a bit of time, but it's well worth it, is that you do the same chicken. You do the same maripois. You put your onion, your celery, your carrots in the pot, your bay leaves, your peppercorn, your salt, and then you take your chicken, your whole chicken, and you set it down in there, and then you put it on the stove with hot water, you turn on the burner, you bring it to a boil, and then you turn it down, and you let it simmer until that chicken is totally cooked through. It is cooked down, all the juices are clear, it's clear to the bone, and you can let it go and go and go until it just falls apart. I usually like to take my chicken out about once it's done, I might let it simmer a little bit more, and then I take it out, let it cool, take all the meat off of it, put all the bones back, put the meat in the Ziploc baggie, put it in the refrigerator for whatever I want to do with it. And so that will take a lot longer, probably two to three hours to simmer down. And then you can even let it go longer till it reduces to whatever consistency you like. But I think that's it. I think cooking stock is one of the 
most important kitchen basics that all home chefs should know how to do. And it will make your life so much easier, especially when you're cooking dishes like risotto that can use up to four four cups of stock and that would be two boxes of stock so you're going through a lot of stock we get to thanksgiving and we're making cornbread dressing we're going to use a lot of stock we're going to have four to six cups maybe maybe more two to three boxes of stock then you have gravy you've got to make gravy so it just goes on and on so learning how to make it when you have the leftovers in the refrigerator freeze it and you have it ready to go at a moment's notice I promise you can do this. So, I'm gonna get this stock boiling and then we're gonna make some risotto. So, stick around, come back next week for the risotto video and I'll see you then. Bye. Look at our beautiful stock just boiling away. Now it's time to turn it down to a little simmer. I'm gonna put it on the back burner and let it just simmer for a little while and then it will be ready for the risotto yum that is gorgeous stock quick stock you can do this